Let me introduce my uh, panel to my left, Honorable Gladys Wanga, who is the Homer Bay County Women's Rep. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Victoria. Glam Pam, looking absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Uh, one of the Nairobi Diaries cast members, but also yes. a businesswoman, interior mm -hmm. designer, actress, model. Can yes. I go on? <laughs> Almost stop there. Almost <laughs> stop there. Bridget Achieng, as well, a Nairobi Diaries cast member. You also are philanthropist. You have the Bridget World Foundation, Foundation. Uh, helping children in Kibera. You'll be telling us more about that a fashionista, actress, and feminist as well. But thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, let me begin with you, Glam Pam, because, you know, when we see you looking beautiful, you have your makeup done, hair, dress, um, you represent this whole idea of, well, slay queen or someone who's been sponsored or blessed, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what do you make of that judgment that people would make with that first impression of you? Uh, well, unfortunately, I do get judged a lot because they think I'm being sponsored all the time or I'm being sponsored at all. I'm a slay queen. And who says business women are not slay queens? I am a business person. I'm confident. I'm self-made. But even if I have a boyfriend who is earning money, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I'm not sharing his money or he can't treat me with his money. But I also have my own money. I have my stuff together. You know, I'm a motivational speaker as well. So I like people to see me. I like young girls and women to know that you can make it. You, we watch celebrities, we watch um, rich people, and everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants a good life. Yeah. Everybody wants to be, uh, women want to be slay queens. They want to dress good all the time. But it starts from you. It doesn't start from someone else. You have to be, you have that perception. You have to be self-made. You have to have self-respect. You have to have motivation. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to understand what you want. Don't do things to please people. I don't do that. So before you became Glamour Pam, What's your story? How did you begin? Well, I'm fortunate that I come from a well-off background. Yeah. My family is quite well-off, so, um, you know, uh, politician, business-orientated, so I learned a lot. But with that being said, there was a lot of ups and downs, and my mom brought me up to know that you have to earn your own. You have to be able to be respected. You have to respect yourself. You have to know what you want and understand what you want. Everybody's got talent and I just followed my talent. It took me a while to realize what I wanted. It took me a while to realize I had a talent and what can I work on to make me be respected, to make me get what I want, to make me do what I want in life. And that's what I did. I concentrated on my talent. It wasn't easy. You know, you fall up, you, back, you get back up again. But it, again, with that, you have to be, you have to have self-esteem. You have to look at the tunnel and look at the light of the other tunnel where people don't see it. You have to have that third eye. And it takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of knocking back and forth, your friends, your circle. Yeah. All of these things take, take a toll in, in, in your life. And it's how you perceive yourself and how you push forward and how you, your confidence and how you build yourself makes you who you are. And you know, I mean, now when we're dealing with an age of social media, mm -hmm. where a lot of young women are told you have to look a certain way to attract mm -hmm. a certain attention from a certain someone mm -hmm. who can give you a certain something. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when someone looks at you, you fit that bill. What do you say to someone who is wondering, well, what talent do you use and how did you get now the success and the money that you have now? You have to build on what you have and what you know best. Um, I used to work, I worked in law firms, uh, I studied law and I went in and out of different companies. I, I worked, I worked for people. Yeah. And it reached to a time when I, I didn't want to work for anybody. Mm. I wanted to build myself because I realized nothing wrong with working for someone, but I wasn't comfortable enough because I realized I'm building someone else's dream and not my own dream. So I started finding out what am I good at? What do I want in life? Where do I, want to, where do I see myself in 10 years? What do I want? I mean, you want to be confident, you want to have um, something that is, it's, it's gonna build you, make you go forward. And I wanted to be an example to many women because a lot of women and young girls, and I stand to be corrected, think that life is easy. You want something what someone else has had, but you don't know how they built it up. If you're ready to work hard and you're ready to be motivated and you're ready to study, you have to be intelligent to do a lot of things. Nowadays, social media is a powerful tool, but we use it a lot of the times in the wrong way. And I don't think we enlighten and teach our society enough on how to build ourselves with the media. Yeah. I use media for everything. Like I Google if I want to. Even before I go to doctors, I'll Google. I'll see, okay, I have a headache. What do I need to take? 
before I got the doctor. So if I go to the doctors, he's giving me second opinion, but I already knew it. Right. And Bridget, let's come to you because you've been very honest about your story and journey. Uh, you came from humble beginnings, started in Kibera, uh, to where you are now. Take us through a young Bridget growing <laughs> up there. What was life like? Oh, when I was a young Bridget, I think it started when I was young. You know, you grow up and in the hood, in the hood is tough. Mm. And in the hood, there is no, you can't see tomorrow, like, mm. people just shut it for you, like, you, you go to Kibera Primary, you go back to Lindy. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. So you see people out there, and maybe you can even ask your auntie, how did they make it to that place? They tell mm -hmm. you, ah, where is the you know, they tend to just pull you down, pull you down. But I was that woman who, when I grew up, I suffered a lot of rejection. So it built up, like I was like, if I have to be whoever I want to be in future, I have to, like, tell myself, Bridget, you can do it and you can. And, I, and there's one thing more that motivated me. I was like, I, used, I never used to take no for an answer. You can tell me I'm fat and I can't do this because I was always a fat kid. I was the youngest, but the biggest mm -hmm. in the class. So anytime when we have to take our report from, I mean, our birth certificate, maybe want to on class eight, and sometimes you just have to bring your documents to school. And when people see my, they'll be like, ah, when you got 12, you know, like, so I suffered rejection well, well when I was a baby. And when I grew up, it, it, was, on my, it was in my head. And I was like, how do I fight this? How do I make Bridget big? Because sometimes you go somewhere. I, I once got a boyfriend, and uh, the boyfriend, my boyfriend was from. A, I'm, I'm been so lucky to get guys who are from well off families. So this is what teared me down. Like, okay, I went to meet the parents, and they're like, so who is your family in Kenya? Because I've been dating foreigners a lot. So who's your family? Who's your mother? Who's your mother? My mother is just a tailor. She can make for you a gown, and it looks so pretty. So how do I want to? Because my dad died when I was 12. So how do I want to, to, how will I tell this woman who's really strong and she's wearing gold all over her hands and I'm a daughter of a nobody, all I can bring on the table is good food and laughter and, you know, I mean, make your boy happy, I mean, your, your son. Yeah. So basically, I don't know much, but my mother is, is just a tailor and she's like, you're a daughter of a tailor, you don't fit here. You know, we need, we, my son is a prince, so if you're gonna fit in, you need to come from the same, so we can't marry you. You are a good girl, you have all the qualities, you are smart, but we need more. And you see, we don't know how to bring you to our, back in our country to meet our people. How will we say, your mother is a tailor? And that thing really weighed me down. And I'm like, you know what, Bridget, you go back on the drawing board. You know? and, and you talked about using social media to kind of grow your brand. Um, you would put oftentimes suggestive pictures. Of, uh, you had a friend who would tell you, you look really beautiful, you have a nice mm -hmm. body. Use that. And then eventually that brought attention of older men who said, that's a beautiful girl. And then it went from there. So how did you kind of get into this lifestyle where you were okay with an older man now giving you trips, money, or whatever it else he could do. Yeah, let's just say, I lost a lot of millions. That is what most girls will not be told. Because sometimes I do an interview, I'm sorry to say, I did an interview with BBC two months prior to what people saw. Yeah. And they cut down slashy to how they wanted it to look. British just didn't come from here and got us a man and sponsored me and it was all good. No, it was never Mary. Because when I did those pictures, it was in my lowest moment. I, I was caught five million at a shopping town. People who know me would say that. And you know, sometimes the way they see me being pictured, they're like, hey, Bridget, why are, being, why are you being pictured like this? And we know you like this. We know you. Mm -hmm. Forget about social, my success don't make it to social media. That's so, so unfortunate because they want to twist it the way they want it to be seen so they can get views because a lot of young girls look up to Bridget because they know I'm a strong woman. I've gone through it all to be who I am today. And, uh, and when I did the pictures, I was one day in my mom's house and we didn't have rent. And uh, my uncles didn't want anything to do with us because after my dad died, they took like everything away from us. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm growing older and here is mom, she's still suffering. She took me to school, she took loans to make sure this girl can talk the English she talks today. And I was like, no. So if my friends keep telling me I have this nice body, I don't care how anyone would judge me, but I have to tell these girls the truth. 
uh, and I was like, okay, so I have a nice body, so this is what they need in the society right now. If I'm going to be a model, I'll get paid. I'm going to host, they're going to get me paid. So, okay, what do I need to do? So I'm not going to mention the lady's name, but she's a very big girl in the country right now. She does, she does plus size clothes, and she made me, like, she gave me that idea. And she was like, but just go do uh, pictures with a nice, uh, nice, I mean, uh, for photographer. Yeah. And if the photos turn out to be nice, I can push it for you in the media. And from there, because you know what you want, with your, you know when you get the fame, you know how you can go about it, because not necessarily you don't have to be a socialite. But when you get this picture, everyone will want to see you. You go for gigs, and that was the why I fell for it, because it was easier for me so when to you, go. You know, so when you got this attention from the pictures, for instance, and you know, um, a man says, can we meet? You mentioned uh, you were offered a trip to Dubai for, was it $10,000? Yeah, that, that was my first time. Like, I got this DM, and, and then this Arab guy was ready to give me all the amount of money I wanted. And, uh, of course, we, 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 some people would, would deny it because you just have to type with your phone. But this is a girl who had nothing. My mom bills need to be paid, and, and I don't have any other way. We already have too much loans that we need to clear in our family. We are threatened every day. And I was like, $10,000 would pay so, 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 and so. Would even get our land back because they took also our land. And there was no one I could cry to. I didn't have anyone to, because when you're poor, when you don't have nothing, no one wants you. No one listens to you. Like, no one, no one wanna hang out with a girl who have nothing. Like, you don't get the, life has changed. You don't get the realness. So I was like, ah. That's a nigga who want to offer me $10,000. I mean, I've never seen $10,000 row in my life. I mean, let me, let, me, let, me, let me try. And you also said that you don't get nothing for nothing. You don't. Meaning you had to give something to get that. Yeah, you don't get nothing for nothing. Sometimes you go and you get someone who's very crazy. You can get someone who's quite crazy and the, the one crazy thing. So it's up to you. Can you do it? Or can you not do it? If you can't do it, you're losing that money. Plus, you might, your life can be a trees because these people there very rich, very, you know, they have the power. You are in someone else's country. You have already bought a flight. So how do you want to deny doing maybe one or two things that they want? So it was, I just say it was grace. After that, I got that money. I went back and put up my shop and I was like, it's not what, so when they called me again, I couldn't be able to, to do because it, 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 it takes a lot. And I mean, these are things that, you, of course, you're not willing to share on television that you're willing to do. But I mean, just talk through the reality because it's, it's, it's ugly things. It's things you don't want yeah, to talk true, about true. and not share. Um, and it's the reality of if you want this money, if you want this life, there's a part of you you have to give. Um, what does that do to you emotionally, mentally, that you knew I did this, I wasn't proud of it, but it's the reality of my life? What would I say? This is what I would say about it. it, it but I have to just say, this is it. Everything in life has a repercussion. You be told, if you do this, this would happen. If you do this, this would happen. So you have to choose. And, and, and life is unfair. Like, life itself is unfair. You don't have it, you have to get it. If you can't get it at the end of it, you just die and your name will just go. So for me, I had to decide if I want to do it if I don't want to do it. And of course, it drains you emotional because like, OK, maybe if my dad was still alive, I wouldn't be able to do it. You, you have those thoughts. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I would want to do this. And, and I want to put it up clear in public. I have never, I've never, my sponsors are not old people. <laughs> I, I, my boyfriend is very young, and yeah, the father of my baby is very young, and I didn't have to sleep with a very old man to be who I am today. Because when you say sponsors, they feel it's very old. It can also be a young person who has money. That's what they don't get. True. And, and okay, we also have a lot of the comments, people saying, um, this is just another form of prostitution, because you're giving of your body to get something in return. There's a, there's a transaction. What, what do you say about that? Because I even heard another young lady say, um, I think it's better than prostitution because I'm not standing on the corner selling my body to just anyone. It's just one man who I know and there's some sort of a relationship. Uh, what's your reaction to that? This is what I'll say, one word. Don't judge me because I seen differently from you. I would come out here and say, people won't, won't, won't come out and say what they do in the dark. But it takes a very bold and strong woman who knows that she's come out of it very strong, and we have many things we are doing. But let me tell you, you can't judge me because I've seen differently. Everybody is a sinner. 
So if I slept with someone who's older just because he could give, that's me a few coins to pay my bills, you know, you are not the one to judge me. Let's leave that to God. When that time comes, I will answer to God. But that's what I would say about that. Let me bring Honorable Wanga in. When, when you hear all of this um, and comments saying that this is bringing down the social fabric of our country, what is your reaction? Well, uh, thank you, Victoria. And I want to thank both Glamcam and, and uh, Bridget, Bridget, Bridget yeah. for you know, discussing these issues. And mm -hmm. I think the one thing that uh, is the bottom line of what they have said is there's no such thing as free lunch. Yes. For everything Precisely. you get, you have to, to give pay. back mm -hmm. and maybe big and maybe painful and maybe too costly. Mm -hmm. So I think this is what, um, you know, those who, 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 the young, you know, ladies who are watching must know that mm -hmm. there is no point at which it's free. You know, the glamour, mm -hmm. the, the, the good life, yeah. you know, unless you work hard for it. For it. Mm -hmm. You know, you must put in work. Something, yeah. You, you know, you Something must put in work. And, 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 and Victoria, we are a very conservative nation. 80% mm. of us, you know, are said to be uh, Christians. We are all brought up, you know, by our parents teaching us mm. to work for what we have mm. and what we get. And, and I think um, the sponsorship, um, um, is really in my in my view, you know, um, and it's not to be judgmental in any way, but it's in my view, you're giving yourself so that you get money in return. It is what we traditionally call prostitution. But also the men, especially the older men who are married, are also in adultery. You know, uh, that is the English. Yeah, we won't point that the is the tradition. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they are adulterers. Yes. And the ladies are prostituting. Yes. I mean, this is this sponsorship <laughs> is just a nice way of yeah. covering, covering it. You know, it's a double but, standard. But yes. It is not, you know, it is not. It, it is not. It's not the sponsor then looking good the way it is. It is actually adultery and prostitution. So we must mm -hmm. talk to both sides. Mm -hmm. Men are willing to protect their daughters for anything. Mm. They pro you know, your father protects you and would kill a man who tries to defile you. But the same fathers go out there and look for young, vulnerable women mm -hmm. and bring them in and, 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 and feel nothing, you know, and sponsor them, so-called. Mm. Let, let us not, Victoria, if we want to correct this, if we want to deal with what is happening within our society, and it has happened over the years, but because we are giving it all manner of good names, we are not be going to be able to, 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 to deal with it, you know? Because... We must call prostitution for what it is. We must call adultery for what it is so that we are able to have this conversation. But I think I'm really, you know, touched by uh, Bridget and, you know, and, and people have come through difficult lives ourselves, everybody. I mean, people come through very, very difficult paths. But we must have a, we must have a bottom line. What, how are we going to walk together? Because we are not, it's not going to be about judging young women and putting them down and saying you're wrong and saying you're right. Are we talking to our children? Are we having this conversation? Right. Are we as parents, including myself, are we just working out there? We are too busy mm -hmm. to have a conversation with our children about what our values are as a society and what our personal values are that we want to pass on to them. And I think as parents, we are guilty as charged. We have left our children to schools. We have left our children to, 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 to their teachers and to the world to teach them. So as so as parents, we must take our rightful uh, place as well. And I think for all, who, and from a legislator's point of view, yeah. you know, we have legislated in the last parliament the, mar the Marriage Bill, the Marriage Act, the Matrimonial Properties Act. And I think what needs to be understood is um, at the end of the day, in this sponsor relationship, there's no protection of law. Mm. You're yeah, not covered yeah. anywhere. Yeah. 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 You, you know, somebody can even sponsor you called and give you a car, give you a house, give you whatever, and you will also invest in that relationship. Yeah. Even for five years, yeah. even for 10, ten years, yeah. you know? But then the day they say they're gone, no, they, they will they, come they, and they take everything. Yeah. There is no recourse in law. 
Yet, the law allows, you know, I, I personally don't believe in polygamy and so on, but the law allows, current, the current marriage act allows polygamy, uh -huh. it allows customary marriages, it allows, so these are things that are covered within law. So if you're in this relationship that is undefined, yeah. mm -hmm. and then things befall you, even somebody hurts you, or they take away everything you have ever invested in, there's no protection, there's no cover that in law true. for you. So let us let us have a very very serious conversation and and especially for our students in tertiary institutions and i i know i came into this conversation because of a a, a statement i made earlier in yeah. the week you know and i'd really like to take this opportunity to pass my most deepest condolences to the family of sharon otieno who is my constituent um in homer bay um, i'm really my heart goes out deeply to the parents the relatives that was a mother most foul most tragic, yeah. most uh, inexcusable and unacceptable. Um, and, and of course we will be pushing for whoever it is who perpetrated it to be brought to book, it doesn't matter how high or how mighty. We will be pushing and we will be on the, on the front line. But I brought in this conversation because um, we must have a broader conversation on this matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of risk mm -hmm. do our children Hold place themselves, themselves in? Yeah. In, in, especially our children in universities and tertiary, you know, institutions of learning. What kind of risk do we do they get themselves in by getting into some of these kinds of relationships? It is a discussion we cannot run away from as a country. It is a discussion that we must have. We must mentor our girls. Way back when I was in the in the university, there was a work study program. So that even if you couldn't afford your studies, you could work. I could slash grass during holidays, work mm -hmm. in the cyber, mm -hmm. do whatever, and get this money to pay up my bills. Our university is still offering that kind of th recourse for students who perhaps want to be able. And, and this problem is not just about high. You know, recently on the radio, yeah. the old men who go for the cash transfer program, they complained, the old men in, in Homer Bay, you know, they, they went to the radio and said, we want to ask our girls to please leave us to go back with our money home when we go and collect it from the <laughs> bank, you know? When we collect it from the bank, let them allow us to go back with it because they go and collect 6,000 shillings every three months. Oh but God. when they get out of the bank, they find all these girls lined up, Lining up. and they take them, they do things with them, they take the money, the old men go home <laughs> empty-handed. So it is a big problem we are facing, we must deal it with it. It seems like they become more aggressive, uh, the young women. You know, uh, that uh, is unfortunate I, that's happening in Homer Bay. I wonder where, which other counties that's happening as well. <laughs> but please, let the old people have their money. Um, but Glam Pam, in, yeah. in terms of, because you mentioned you're a motivational speaker. Yeah. And, and, and so wanting to mentor the next generation of women and young girls, um, what do you tell them in terms of the kind of lifestyle or lives they should be living, putting in hard work, you mentioned this earlier, but what do you mentor them on usually? Um, well, I get a lot of girls who talk to me on my DM or meet me, some my fans asking me, what can they do? do? Can I help them find a job? Can I do this? Because they think and assume that I did it, I got it easy. And I have to keep reminding them that I didn't just wake up and get myself here. You know, you, you have to, and first of all, I think it comes with I agree um, with, 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 is it? Honorable Wanga. Honorable yeah. Wanga. Yeah. That it starts from, the foundation starts from home. Yeah. Both parents. Um, and I think that we don't have that enough nowadays. The, the society nowadays is too busy and we're, we're just going, going, going. We're not taking a break and considering and valuing the, the, the fundamentals of looking and building our family from scratch. And I think I had a very good background because that's why I am where I am and I thank my parents for doing that. At the time I thought they were very harsh. I used to even be beaten all the time because I was very naughty. But at the end of the day, I appreciate that now. I think as much as how my mom and my parents were busy, they always made time and made sure I studied. I did my, I did my um, homework. I did extra tuition. I did um, extra curriculum, which I don't think a lot of people are doing now. And it kind of keeps the kids out on the away from the streets. Um, the circle I was with was very restricted. And I think all this comes up and molds you and builds you to who you are. And for me, I'm always um, educating and trying to persuade and um, build young girls and women that if you want something, you have to go and get it. You have to make that decision. It's not going to come to you. It's not served in a silver platter. Okay. And at the end of the day, um, 
even the, the, the so-called sponsors want women who are motivated, women who are go-getters, women yeah, who sure. are str strong, women who are educated, you know, because with that, maybe you'll use that money to build something else. At the end of the day, if you get that money easy, you're going to just waste it. But if you don't have brains and business-minded or orientated to deal with it, you're going to be using it the wrongly, and you're, the circle is still going to be going back yeah. again, rotating. Yeah. But, and you've been honest about some of the changes, uh, I mean, now in terms of body image and accepting yeah. who you are. Mm -hmm. um, you've gone for plastic surgery. Yes, I have. What do you think that, what kind of message do you think that sends to young women in terms of you went for some body augmentation, you didn't really accept yourself as you were created. What kind of message do you think that sends to young women? And you're a mom as well, you mm -hmm. have a daughter. Yeah. So, well, uh, it does send mixed messages. It depends on who, who receives the message and how they perceive the message. Because at the end of the day, uh, they have to understand that it's me and not them. And I have my reasons behind that. Just like when you choose to work, if, if you're educated and you've got qualifications and you choose to accept and be content with a simple job, or you refuse a simple job and go for a higher job, it's the same stake. So for me, I did not do it. I accept myself and I love myself how I am. But if I have an opportunity to, to buy a, a, a Toyota or buy a Mercedes-Benz, I'm going to go for a Mercedes-Benz. Why should I settle for less? if I can have the higher end. So that, that was my decision. I'm a model, uh, so therefore, enhancing myself, I was capable and I could afford it. And I, like I said, it is also got a risk. There's a risk factor, very high risk factor. And um, with that being said, I did speak about this previously with Jeff Kwanang and I explained to them that it's not just something that you say, Pama's go, she looks good, I'm gonna do it. No, you have to understand there's a lot of risk factor, there's a lot of multi, you know, um, sense of why do you need it? What are you doing it for? Why did I do it? Why, you know, it, it's not just something that you decide and wake up to do it. And I do get a lot of questions, but what people don't understand that we don't educate our society enough is that there is a lot of research we again I am gonna stress we use the media sometimes wrongly I used media 24 7 to research mm -hmm. who was gonna do my, my work the surgeon the credentials right. and it's, it has enhanced me but at the same time also I'd get being judged because sometimes people look at me and think oh she's done her boobs so she must be a stripper or she's done her boobs so she must be this but you know I don't let that bring me down because at the end of the day people need to talk about good things and uh, that makes me feel it doesn't make me feel build my confidence any high more or bring it lower it's just that I choose to do it for my own reasons and speaking of choice Bridget's you know it's heartbreaking to hear your story of how you had to get into this lifestyle um, it, tough times as a kid making sure that you provide for your family and you know many wondering did you have to were there other options and you know, are you considering, do I have to be in this life for the rest of my life, for instance? Would you want to get out? Would you want to settle down, get married? You're, you're expecting a, a child right now. You know, have you considered that in terms of, can I be this for much longer? And what does it mean in terms of the kind of life I want to live and even the life you want to provide for, for your child? Well, what people don't understand here is, as she said, you need to be intelligent because we see a lot of girls wasting away through sponsors and through men giving them money. A girl can be given even $50,000, then you call them in a week, they have nothing. They didn't invest the money. But it depends, what I would say is that why are you getting in it? Mm. For selfish reasons? For what reason exactly? Mbono Nataka sponsor, why do you want a sponsor? So what happens? So that you can just sit down and expect the world to come and you know, clean your feet. No, it's not like that. I didn't do this like for long. I want to make it very clear. I had my moment and I saw this is not, this can't be my life because my conscience, I was a church girl, you know. Okay, I'm still a church girl, but I mean, I was in choir and I'm like, okay, the girl, I want the girl who was, or the girl in choir to be, the girl in choir to be back. Mm -hmm. Of course, I want to have a family. The way I was raised in church, I still want to have a family. And the reason I did this is because I needed to, to start up. I needed, I needed a starter pack. I needed to go back to business because if you see my videos before, even on YouTube, you see I used to do jewelry. I've been a creative girl way back. Yeah. So basically, someone will not just come today and say, Bridget, life was sponsored. And I did not, I did not just wake up and get, got a sponsor. No, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that because right now I'm working on building my family. I'm four months.
plus pregnant and I'm so proud of myself. My family is okay now and every time when I wake up, I even she tells me, Bridget, you're overworking yourself mm -hmm. because most of the time I just have a boyfriend who can fund my life, can give me what I want, but we are planning to, you know, go to the altar. So someone cannot wake up today and tell me that is Bridget's sponsor because that man is in my life because he saw something in me. He saw all the videos on YouTube, he saw everything, he saw everything. He saw how I was being bashed by the community for, for being who I am, for coming out and talking to young girls. Yeah. Because right now I'm taking, over, taking care of over 50 kids. And uh, for me to be able to take care of those 50 kids is because of what I went through when I was a kid. I don't want them to be raped. So if any kid knocks on our foundation, my mother's door today, my mother would open the door because my mother feels like she didn't give me enough as a kid because she used to work, work, work. But when she comes back home, she doesn't know if Bridget is okay mentally. You know, she, doesn't, she didn't know, but my uncle used to rape me on the law. But I could cry, but no one used to listen to me. So if someone would sit out, down, out there and whatever and judge me, it's okay, but I have my reasons why I did what I had to do because I'm a hard working girl. I lost it. I lost over five million. I, I, I tried to talk with whoever people on the authority up there. No one helped me. My money kept wasting away because someone told me your container is coming. For, so what was I supposed to do? I tried to talk to people. I went to a psychiatrist. My life was, I was I, I almost, even I tried to kill myself. My mom told me, like, what can we do? But I still want to make my mama happy. Mm. And I don't want her to know what I'm doing. So it was not, it is not something I would sit down here and be proud. My DM is packed today. Girls want a job. And I told them if I happen to be someone proper, like if I happen to be given leadership in the society, which I'm actually working towards it, I'll try and make sure, like, young girls, I'll put them first. Yeah. Because what I went through, it's still, my mind is still unstable until today because for me to be, even be with a man, I had to be 25 years. So you can imagine the struggle and I'm 29 today and I even have a baby in my womb. It's not easy. I have people who talk to me and it's because they have money. Because if I didn't have money to even pay someone mm. to listen to me, you can imagine. So most of the young girls who are out there and they want to do, maybe they want to be like Bridget. Right. Trust me, being Bridget is not easy. You need to come sit next to me. So I'll tell you, if you want to follow Bridget's way, it's not easy. Girl, nothing goes for nothing. I repeat, you want that old man, he will ask you something that you cannot be able to give. Most of these men, they are doing rituals. They have been, like, they have, they are, they have things, like, you, you don't understand. Yeah. I don't want to go in details, but it's deep. All those girls who want my DM, or oh, Bridget, show me how to get sponsored. Trust me, if I had a brothel right now or somewhere I could put all these girls, I'll be a millionaire today. Because just, my DM is packed. I don't know what to do with all these girls because they still want it. That's the problem. And you know, Bridget, um, this is probably the first time I've seen you be this honest mm. um, and show how much pain it caused mm -hmm. and caused you. Um, for the young ladies who are watching and saying, I want to be you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and I wish you'd talk more and be honest and tell them, don't come here. Take another route. Mm -hmm. yeah, Do something sure. else. Because it's not worth it. I mean, even on your social media page, if you could take that step to do that. Because I think then it would now shift the whole paradigm of what young women think mm -hmm. and feel they should do. Mm -hmm. um, if you had ch a chance to leave and get out, would you? I did a long time ago. Yeah. Because um, mentally, I'm not, um, I wouldn't say anything I did in the past. I'm, I'm very proud of who I am. Mm. Because if any woman went through what I went through, mm -hmm. maybe they'll be dead by now, you know? Mm. So what I would say is, um, when you see a woman out there having a shit together, please just, just meet them when on their own. Just learn to know how they did it. Yeah. Because most of the time we, we really want we really want Nicki Minaj's life, we want Cardi B's life. But will you be able to go what, through what Cardi B went through? Can you be able to walk that path? Mm. So girls should not just sit there and want it to come easy. Nothing comes easy. A lot of youths nowadays they are so lazy because I've housed a few girls in my house, she knows and even a few girls in our show in Nairobi Diary. And you see, all they want to do is wake up at 12, and then they want to get a phone call from a man, or they, they, they think that if Bridget got it, and you know she's big or whatever, I can also get it. Mm. You don't know my drive. Mm. 
You need to have a drive before you do what you want to do. But this is what I'm going to tell girls. Trust me, that's not the way to go. If you have another way, kindly choose another way. Then you can start small because I've been a house girl. Trust me, I have suffered. Mm -hmm. These people will never understand. Those people will judge me. I always say, like, maybe God will listen to my heart more than a human being because if humans were, were going to be God, most of us wouldn't be alive today. And, you know, the funny thing is that I'm seeing it on live today. I've never slept with, the, with someone's husband. Never. So I still have morals because I've been called many times. I can show you. I have, I have people even telling me, even till today, and I'm pregnant. Someone will tell me, I'll give you $30,000 because the way I see you on TV, when I see this, I just want you in my bed. But guess what? I turn down those offers because that's not, that's not the woman I want to be. I want to fight for culture till I die, even if, I, even if right now someone asks me, I have, my finances have gone down because I'm taking care of kids who I don't know their mother nor their father. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so this is what I'll tell girls, that's not the way to go. You can do something, I mean, it's not easy for the youth in my country, but I know we can sit down and come up with something. I'll sit with Grandma Pam and other people, I'll sort of sit with Mama over here, and we can see what we can do for the girls, just girls who really want to change their life. Yeah. But the sponsor way is not the way, because already girls already judge me, because I try to fight it all the time, and I just have enemies. I build enemies every day, and girls will come on my DM and send me this. But you know what? I've been through this. I'm a strong woman. And I know what I want in life, and I'm working towards it, and I'm, I'm very proud of myself. Thank can you. I, can Thank I just yes, interrupt really quickly a little bit we and kind of, um, I'll back up on what Bridget is saying. I mean, a lot of people want something, but they don't understand the consequences yeah. and the risk factor that goes along with it. I mean, remember, you're meeting a stranger, someone you don't know about, someone you have no clue what they're about. They could be serial killers. Yeah. They could be, I mean, I've had someone who actually DM'd me and asked me that they've got someone in Facebook. They do have women uh, who approach you in Facebook and open like a business thing and they try to bring women from different places and from they promise countries. you yeah. a lot of things. And when you hear these promises when you're suffering because the thirst is real, the yeah. struggle is real, yeah. you will not think twice about it. But what you're forgetting is you are working hard for your children or working hard because you're saying, I'm single, I need to support my child. But what you're forgetting is when you go to that, through that door, are you going to come back? What is behind that door? Is your family going to be proud of you? Are you going to be able to come back to support your family? Because if you do go through that door with a stranger who you have no clue about, if they kill you, then that's it. As of, unfortunately, we have lost somebody through this. And it's very sad for us. And we need to raise this factor and also open opportunities <laughs> in our society for more women to know that you can build yourself. You have, even if those people who have an, no, no education, we need to, our society needs to give more opportunities to young women and encourage them and elaborate them and push them forward to work hard because that is the only way to success. Nobody who's as, who have achieved success or who are rich or millionaires got it easy. The struggle starts from foundation, and you have to start somewhere to reach somewhere. Absolutely. Hard work. Honorable Wanga, we'll close with you. Just your final comments, closing comments, um, you know, after hearing such a heart-wrenching story and experience from, from Bridget. Yeah, I think uh, I'd, I have, you know, nothing really much to add because I think this is, uh, I really just want to thank Bridget and, and Pam for yeah. coming out and saying you, we, we are where we are, but sponsor is not the, the route. And, and, and what I think as leaders, and especially women leaders, we need to do is provide a platform mm -hmm. where we can have a conversation, yeah. you know, girl to girl. I, you know, I come from where I come from. I probably, you know, um, uh, Glam, Glam Pam comes from where she comes from, mm -hmm. you know, Bridget the same. Yeah. If we had a platform yeah. where we could share mm -hmm. with girls who are coming up, young girls, we could mm -hmm. talk. We could mentor each other. Yeah. We could, you know, say this is, you know, this is where I am, but this is where I've come from. This is the route. This is not the route. Mm -hmm. So I think as women leaders, the challenge is on us to provide a mentorship mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I run a program for mentorship, but for high school girls. But mm -hmm. the girls come from high school in the villages, yes, and they yes. walk into Nairobi yeah. or wherever yeah. it is, and they have no idea yeah. what mm -hmm. I came to Nairobi, maybe, the, you know, when I came to the university. I've just come from the village. I've grown up in the village. I've just appeared here mm -hmm. and people will pull you in all directions yeah, they'll true. tell you oh do you want to do this yes yeah. it's here you know yes so we really really need a mentorship 
Absolutely. program, especially university and you know tertiary institutions. Our girls who come out and are here, we need to talk to each other and we need to get these experiences shared so that uh, we can take this along. And we are just committing that we want to be able to to do that uh, within our constituencies and also broadly even within the country once uh, we discuss this as, as the women leadership. Let's talk to each other, let's, let's, let's walk this journey together, let those who've gone ahead help those who are coming from behind so that we, we don't get into the same pitfalls. Uh, absolutely, judgment is not the way and I yeah. hope this conversation is proof that women are not their own worst enemies. No. If we understand someone's struggle, we don't judge, but we try to find ways of dealing with the problem so mm -hmm. it's not something that down the road we are unable to control. Thank you so much for your time, Thank Glam you. Pam, Thank Bridget, you. and Honorable Wanga.